Today we're recapping the post-apocalyptic action film, Waterworld. Spoilers ahead. We start with an ominous voiceover, which explains that in the future, the polar ice caps have all melted and covered the world in water. As a result of this calamity, humans have been forced to adapt and survive. The Mariner is our hero. He lives on a ramshackle trimarin which looks to be built from random pieces of scrap. As he sails the vast oceans of the New World, he urinates in a small container, which he then pours into a machine that converts his urine to drinkable water. This is to nourish a lime tree he keeps on the boat. Life is peaceful, and he spends his days fishing and diving for junk. As he floats, another boat appears. This one has a drifter on board, who tells the mariner of an atoll settlement eight days east. They decide not to make a trade when a couple of smokers appear on the horizon. These biker types of the sea ride jet skis, and upon seeing the mariner and drifter, they attack. The drifter is too slow and gets taken, but the mariner shows his trimaran to be fast, agile, and easily capable of escaping. An atoll is a large floating city that sits in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by high metal walls, and built like a fortress. The mariner enters the atoll on his boat and takes note of the squalor and poverty within. He parks his boat and asks some local boys to watch his stuff while he heads for the market to make a trade. On the way, law enforcement warns him not to make any trouble. At the market, the mariner reveals that he has real dirt to trade, a rare commodity among the people of the atoll. Excited, they trade him 124 chits for just one jar. He then uses those chits to buy a tomato plant and some shelving for his boat from Helen, a local barmaid. The mariner is exotic, and the trades he makes catches the eyes of the local population. One family asks him to take their daughter with him so that he may impregnate her. He refuses, which makes them suspicious. When they ask the local authorities to arrest him, they learn that he was born mutated, with gills behind his ears and webbed feet. He fights back, shooting a spear into one man's foot and killing another. But they soon trap him in fishing nets and the mariner is subdued. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds, and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. That night, Helen speaks with an old man, Gregor. He's an inventor who seeks to find dry land. She wants to know how long until they can leave for their search, but he tells her that they can't until he figures out where to go. The directions are tattooed on a little girl's back. Her name is Enola. Her background is mysterious, and this tattoo is believed to be a map to dry land that no one can read. The mariner hangs in a cage above a sinking swamp pit. He watches as the locals scavenge his ship and steal from him, but there's nothing he can do. Gregor approaches and starts asking him about his mutations. He seems interested in the mariner, despite how rude the mariner is to him. He then asks the mariner about dry land, and if he knows how to find it. But the mariner dismisses dry land as a myth. Still trapped in the cage, the mariner is lowered into the sinking swamp pit. It's an execution, and there's nothing he can do. Suddenly, a large army of speedboats, jet skis, and other water vessels approach the atoll from the outside. They're led by a smoker called Deacon, and although it isn't clear what they want, it's clear they plan on destroying the atoll and everyone inside. A huge battle takes place with the atoll surrounded and fired upon by large machine guns which tear through the high walls. Next, the jet skis ride up hastily constructed ramps and land inside the atoll. It's pandemonium. The mariner sees this as a chance to escape, but as he tries, his cage falls and begins to sink in the swamp. He reaches for an arrow, a final attempt to unlock the cage, but it's too late. The cage is almost sunk, and with it, so is he. Old Gregor sees now is the time to escape too. He's built a hot air balloon, and plans to fly himself, Helen, and Enola to dry land. Unfortunately, he fills the balloon too quickly and accidentally leaves without Helen and Enola. As he flees, the deacon orders the balloon shot down but an error sees his ship fired upon instead. There's a huge explosion and the deacon dives off just in time. Still in the cage, the mariner is sinking fast. Looks like he has no way of escaping. But then Helen comes to the rescue. 
she offers to rescue him so long as he takes she and Enola on his boat to dry land. With no choice, the mariner agrees. What follows is a daring escape as Helen is forced to open the atoll's gate while the mariner steers his boat toward it. The gate gets stuck and the mariner uses the rigging of the ship to fly up the side of the walls, kick open the mechanism blocking the gate, and then slide down the sail as the boat drifts through the gate and out to sea, leaving the destroyed atoll in their wake. The deacon and his smokers raid the atoll. They have a random man strung up and they ask him if he knows the location of the little girl Enola. This was their purpose for attacking the atoll. The man says he'll tell the deacon if the deacon agrees to spare his life. The deacon agrees, but when he's told that the girl left on a boat, he becomes irate and orders the man killed anyway. Having just escaped, Helen asks the mariner if he knows where Dryland is. He tells her that he does, but before they leave, they'll have to toss Enola over the side or run out of food and water. Helen does everything she can to change his mind, even offering herself to him in return but he turns her down. When she threatens him with a spear gun, he drops the sail on her and knocks her out cold with a large paddle. The deacon is having his eye fixed after it was damaged in the previous battle. Looks like shit, so he wears an eye patch instead. His home is a giant oil tanker, filled with thousands of smokers. Their goal is to find dry land, a promise that keeps the deacon in control. The problem is that Enola is the key to finding dry land. And now she's gone, and they have no idea where to look. Even worse, he learns their oil supply is getting dangerously low, so they must hurry. Helen and Enola become anxious on the boat. The days are long, and there's no food to eat. Helen complains to the mariner, who ignores her. But when he sees Enola drawing on his boat, he becomes furious and throws her off the side. Helen screams that she can't swim, and then dives in after her. The mariner looks like he might leave them both, but then he goes back and picks them up. A roaming smoker plane suddenly spots them in the water. Helen knows that if the plane leaves, they're all doomed. So she hurries to a large spear gun bolted into the boat, aims it at the plane, and fires. It's a direct hit, but now the plane's attached to the boat via the metal rope. The plane starts to circle the boat, tangling it in a web, breaking the boat slowly. The mariner scurries up the side of the rigging, trying desperately to untangle the boat from the plane. The smokers are doing the same, firing at the rope as a means to break free. A lucky shot sees the rope snap, the boat flings forward, and the mariner sent flying from the top of the sails and into the water. Furious with Helen for ruining his boat, it looks like he's going to kill her, but then he just cuts hers and Enola's hair off with his large knife. The deacon is thrilled that they found the boat. He guesses at their location and orders his men to intercept them. He needs to find that girl. The mariner comes upon a drifter in the water. Legally, they're forced to trade, and Helen reminds him that they need food. The drifter claims to have paper, and the mariner offers to trade Helen for such a precious commodity. Helen refuses, but when the drifter asks for the girl instead, Helen takes her place. As the drifter drags Helen into the hull, The mariner quickly reads the paper, sees that it's of no interest, and then cancels the deal. The drifter refuses, becomes agitated, and then tries to stab the mariner. A scuffle ensues, and the mariner surfaces uninjured. The drifter is not so lucky. Desperate for food, the mariner shows Helen and Enola how he eats. He dives into the water and acts as bait being pulled behind his boat while a gigantic mutated fish as big as a whale tries to eat him. With spear gun in hand, Mariner kills the fish and cooks it for he, Helen, and Enola to eat. He was cold at first, but despite himself, the Mariner slowly starts to warm to Helen and Enola. Especially Enola. He gives her a crayon to draw with and teaches her how to swim. Helen watches the two, worried about the bond they're creating. An outpost in the ocean is the mariner's next stop. As they come across the small posting, they spy men in the towers waving them in. It looks suspicious as we see these men are dead and that smokers have taken over. Beneath the water are hidden jet skis and the deacon waits for the mariner to get closer before releasing them. At the last minute, the mariner realizes the deception and turns the boat to flee. 
The smokers give chase, but the mariner has a few extra tricks up his sleeve. His boat has extra sails that shoot out like parachutes, and he lets them loose, catching the wind and easily escaping the smokers. Safe now, the mariner wants to know why the smokers are after Helen and the girl. Helen reveals that the girl has a tattoo on her back that leads to dry land, that she might be the key to finding it once and for all. The mariner tells her that dry land is a myth and doesn't exist. She refuses to believe him, so he shows her. Using a plastic bubble large enough to fit a person, the mariner guides Helen beneath the water. He can breathe on the account of his gills and he takes her miles beneath the sea, showing her the old world and how it has since been covered by water. There is no dry land. Dry land is gone. Helen appears speechless. Still on the boat, Enola waits, but as she does, she notices something in the water. It looks like sharks sent by the deacon. She quickly hides. When the mariner returns to the surface, he realizes that the smokers have tracked them down. The deacon is on the boat and demands that they tell them where the little girl is hiding. The mariner refuses, so the deacon tricks Enola into thinking that he has killed them by firing his gun in the air. She screams and runs out, only to be grabbed up by the smokers. With Enola in hand, the deacon orders the mariner and Helen to be killed. The mariner dives into the water with Helen, drags her under, and uses his gills to breathe for her until the smokers think them drowned and leave. When they return to the surface, they find their boat has been burned to ash. All hope is lost. Back on his own oil tanker, Deacon pretends to act nice in front of Enola, trying to convince her to trust him. She doesn't, not one bit. He offers her a cigarette, and again she turns him down. He offers her some coloring pencils to draw with, and this warms her up, a little. He asks her if she knows how to get to dry land, and she tells him that she doesn't know. She tells them that it doesn't matter because the mariner will come for him. Deacon doesn't seem worried at all. For the first time, the mariner opened up to Helen. He speaks of being alone, of how he really feels towards her. He wants her, but only if she wants him. It's clearly hard for him, but she opens up too. The pair kiss and make love in the wreckage of the boat. It looks like all hope is lost though, and as the mariner tries to repair the boat, she speaks of her yearning for dry land not known to be a fable. But then they look above and they see old Gregor appear in his hot air balloon. They're saved. That night, the mariner is with the survivors from the atoll. They discuss a plan, with most of them agreeing they need to try and find dry land. Gregor reminds them that they need the child to find dry land, but they protest that it's too dangerous. The mariner tells them that he'll go and save her alone. The mariner finds the oil tank where the smokers live. As he sneaks on board, stealthy killing smokers one by one, the deacon addresses the smokers. They demand to know what the plan is and why they haven't found dry land yet. He lies to them and tells them that he knows the way. He commands that they start rowing, and they do, with every single man fleeing the deck and headed for the oars that stick out the side of the great vessel. As the smokers flee below deck, the mariner appears alone. The deacon spots him, and the mariner asks for the girl back. The deacon laughs and tells him no, so the mariner threatens to drop a flare into the oil reserve and blow the tanker up and kill them all. Deacon tries to convince him not to do it, citing her bad qualities as a reason to leave, but the mariner says that she is his friend, and that's all that matters. He drops the flare, and the boat explodes. As the boat explodes, Deacon flees with the girl. The mariner gives chase. He ends up atop a podium, watching as the deacon flees in an airplane. He shoots a spear gun into the plane and slides along the rope in pursuit. The plane crashes before taking off. The mariner grabs Enola and the two embrace, but they're far from safe. In the hot air balloon above, Gregor and Helen see the exploding tanker and hurry to save the mariner and Enola before it's too late. They drop and rope down as Enola starts to climb. The mariner follows, but as the balloon rises, they see the deacon has the rope too. He hurries after them, but the mariner and Enola kick him off and he falls into the water. Finally, they're safe. Until the deacon fires a gun at the balloon and knocks Enola into the water with him. The mariner thinks quickly, 
Seeing two jet skis in the water headed for Enola, he grabs the rope and ties it around his ankles. He then dives off the balloon and into the water after the girl. As he falls, two jet skis race closer and closer. They're nearly at her. The mariner drops, dives into the water, grabs Enola, and springs back up just in time to see the two jet skis crash and explode, killing themselves and the deacon. Gregor finally figures out the tattoo on Enola's back and how to get to dry land. He steers the balloon in that direction, and after several days of flying, the mariner spots seagulls on the balloon. He looks further and spies land. Dry land. They can't believe it. They land on what appears to be a tropical island, marveling in the dirt and grass and stone, all things they have never seen before. Some searching reveals a small hut that contains the bones of a couple long since dead. Among them are drawings of a map similar to that tattooed on Enola's back. These people were her family, and when they realized that they were dying, they sent her away, hoping that she would lead more people back to dry land. Sometime later, the mariner has built another boat. He tracks down Enola, who complains that he's leaving, that she doesn't want him to go. He tells her he isn't made for dry land, that the sea is his home. She argues that he'll get used to it, that it's just land sickness, but he knows he will not. And what's more, he doesn't want to. His life is on the water. And it's as simple as that. They say their heartfelt goodbyes and he promises to return. Enola watches her hero, the Mariner, sail off into the horizon, free.